Hey friends, good to be back with you on the long obedience with the Psalms of Ascent. This phrase was coined in a book by Eugene Peterson called A Long Obedience in the Same Direction. Peterson is one of the church's prophetic voices of the last 50 years or so, widely known for the message, his paraphrase of the entire Bible, and he remains for us a companion and guide as today we turn to Psalm 130. The psalmist begins in what seems to be a dark night of the soul. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord, O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my pleas for mercy. Where Psalm 129 looks at affliction that is outward and visible, Psalm 130 turns to the inward and spiritual. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, O Lord, who could stand? Now, to be very clear, the respective accents of Psalm 129 and Psalm 130 is not to set up a dualism or a disconnect between the evil out there and the sin in here. Actually, one of the crucial errors we can make as the church is to treat sin on merely a micro level, a record of private struggles and temptations divorced from macro level evils and injustice. And there are a host of resources to help think Christianly along these lines, not least of which show up here in the Psalms of Ascent. We, especially those instructed in Reformed doctrine, should be quick to confess that, to use Samuel Johnson's phrase, depravity is not easily overcome. The psalmist draws a direct line from the sin in our hearts to the evil infecting the bloodstream of our common life. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, who could stand? But, and I've heard it said, some of the great statements of the faith hinge on prepositions, and here is a great instance of that. But, O oh Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, that you may be feared. At the volta of Psalm 130, in a dramatic turn, the psalmist names God's heart for the world and the hope for God's people his steadfast love, and abounding grace. Now let's not forget that this is a long obedience, and it requires a good deal of waiting and long suffering. The Apostle Paul gets at this, writing to Christians in Rome, that suffering produces perseverance, and perseverance character, and character hope. I feel this often with and for college students in the rhythms of the academic year, waiting on the grade, waiting on a romance, waiting on vocational direction, waiting on applications, waiting for finals to end. And then the dawn breaks. Clarity, uh, which only comes with time, uh, final exams, which come and go, and as Trig Johnson likes to say, students launch into the wide open countryside of salvation in wherever God is leading. Waiting is not easy, but neither is it passive, as we see here in Psalm 130. It's an anticipating and a readying for God to make good on his promises so that we're prepared to offer our lives as Christ did for us. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is plentiful redemption, and he will redeem Israel from all his iniquities.